Hi, and welcome to part two of our discussion of fundamental analysis. I'm actually quite passionate about this particular subject because I'm convinced that simplified fundamental analysis can make a big difference in your investing success. However, it's much more accessible and just easier to do than traders will uh, oftentimes assume from the information that's out there. So the same information that analysts or education firms or whatever may be using to write an interesting article is uh, there are some problems with this information it's, it's, uh, uh, and trying to combine too much or overcomplicate the whole situation. Let me walk you through a few pitfalls before we jump into the question of, all right, but what are we trying to solve for by doing any fundamental analysis, simplified or not? Because it, it really is worth it. So the first problem that traders deal with is that fundamental analysis is oftentimes uh, uses the extremes. In other words, here's an example. Let's say you have a series of financial ratios or measurements that, uh, that wh whatever methodology you're subscribing to at the time says these are all good. Then logically, wouldn't you also assume that, well, then therefore, aren't the very best of stocks that exhibit those characteristics? Shouldn't those be the ones that I look for? You, we can get in a situation where we begin to narrow the scope of what we're looking for so tightly that we begin to lose uh, relevance. And in fact, what we get, and this is a little contrarian, but what we get are a lot of stocks that are at their highs. Here's an interesting experiment. There's, there's one way that you can uh, kind of create an analogy here, and that is uh, look for a bunch of, pull a bunch of stocks that are their 52-week highs. Even better would be to pull some historical results of stocks that are their 52-week highs over the past uh, 12 months ago, for example, and then look at their performance. What happened to those? Well, there's, they have a propensity to decline from those highs. Well, the same thing is true of fundamental analysis. Let's take our ROE example. You can find stocks that have an ROE of 190, 300% on up. The problem is, how long have they had that? What's causing that? Those extremes, even though it seems really good, can cause problems in projecting future price growth. It, 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 they almost have no relevance as to what the future of that company really looks like. So the second thing is traders will oftentimes begin to pile indicators. And this happens to fundamental analysts, technical analysts. Uh, what they'll do is if, if a good trade, if there's a probability of X to find a good trade because it has a good Name, name the criteria here, whatever criteria you want. Uh, then therefore, if I were to add another indicator, then I could increase that probability because if it has a 25% of being a good tr trade with this particular uh, indicator, and then you add another one that also has a 25% chance or a 35% chance or whatever of being accurate, and I add those together, then the cumulative, I should be really, well, that would be true if, any of the data around stocks or stocks movement themselves were normally distributed or dependent variables, which the stocks do not have a normal probability uh, distribution. And any of the criteria around a stock does not have a normal probability distribution. If it did, we would all be able to, it, investing would be very simple and very easy. So don't make the mistake of thinking that I can pile indicators on top of each other and the more fundamentals I look at, that's going to increase my probability of success. It won't. They're independent of each other. They don't really have anything to do with each other at all. So the second thing is no context. You can say this about ROE or any other fundamental indicator as well. That if you have no context, in other words, a variable looked at all by itself does not mean anything unless you understand well, how does this relate to the environment around it? What about the market or the sector or the industry? So this is one thing specifically that I'm going to address as we start to answer the question of, well, what is good? What is a good fundamental uh, uh, criteria? Well, what's, what's a good rating uh, or, or measure uh, for ROE specifically, but any fundamental criteria? So no context really yields uh, a measure of the stock against itself, which ultimately has no meaning. It's, it's a matter of, uh, I find that the biggest pitfall is when uh, traders will start to compare stocks that are within industry groups, so, uh, or across industry groups rather. So consumer electronics versus uh, commodities. 
Well, the, 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 the fundamental, the way in which those companies are managed, the ways in which they produce performance and value for their shareholders is so different. They have, they're almost impossible to compare. Uh, and then finally, we have what we would call, a, I would call, or characterize as a semi-efficient marketplace. What I mean by that is that uh, the, one of the major assumptions behind the efficient market hypothesis, which is something that you've probably heard as justification for why the market and market movements are really random, is that it's, it's assumed that most information available about a stock or a company is widely known. So therefore, because it's widely known, it's already priced into the value of the stock. So what stock investors are really doing is they are investing and speculating on future uh, earnings, future growth, etc. They're not investing in what happened in the past. So, and largely this is somewhat true. The, the, the market clearly isn't completely efficient. But what has already come out of the market, so in other words, what's already available in earnings releases, et cetera, is widely known. Everybody knows what that stock has been doing. And to a great extent, what has already happened is already priced into the stock. So it's a real danger to look at um, uh, probably the biggest pitfall that I see are traders will uh, hear a pitch that a particular fundamental score or criteria is very predictive and what they're really getting fed to them are today's scores that have already been priced into the stock and have been for for the entire time that score has been or that financial financial performance which has been underlying that score has been available so it really has no predictive value into the future there are some specific things, however, we are trying to understand through fundamental analysis, regardless of how you simplify it, and it makes it much easier, much faster, and a lot more reliable. So we'll be getting into that as to how do we start to use those criteria that are uh, both helpful from a forecasting perspective as well as from a uh, risk management perspective, which is one of the places that fundamental analysis uh, matters the most.